Hey guys, Moro Sambonani Hello, how's it? Welcome to another episode of Blacks Only. Coming to you this time from uh, a very chilled environment um, here at home on a wonderful Sunday. I hope you enjoyed what was a wonderful week, a very busy week, a news filled week. And we're going to go through that news filled week here on this show. Remember, Blacks Only is the show that um, makes fun of society's obsession with things like race and gender and all these essentially useless things that are argued to identify who we are when really who we really are is who we are intellectually who we are mentally if you will and it is that diversity that matters on the show that intellectual diversity welcome to it welcome to another episode i'm joined of course by the fellows today um who of course is an intern at the free market foundation zakele welcome Thank you for having me, thank you for having me. Excellent. And of course, Udumo Denga is also joining us today. Dumo, of course, is the host of the Man Patria podcast. I'll put that information here on the screen. Uh, fellas, let's hop into the conversation. Um, it's been an interesting week, hasn't it, so far as some really topical news items. I think top of mind for me has been uh, the expropriation of our compensation. It seems it's entering that, that, that truly socialist phase now. The idea that politicians themselves um, will remove any checks and balances, any accountability, and be the sole decision makers in this. And for those who are unaware of what I'm talking about, of course, is you know the ANC came out and basically said, hey, why do we need the courts to be the arbitrators of who gets expropriated when we, the politicians and government, can do that? So, like, Kelly, why is that a problem? Oh. That is a problem because it gives the executive discretionary powers that should never be accorded to it. Not only that, even prior to this proposed amendment to the amendment of the constitution, the bill in itself was very problematic because yes. it had a section the court were supposed to use legislation to determine the parameters whereby compensation would be zero, basically. So the legislature in that parliament in that parliament could already have the power to determine aspects or scenarios whereby compensation would be nil for property expropriation. So they basically just made explicit to what was implicit in a lot of people's eyes who hadn't read the bill mm. beforehand. So it's basically a no-no. Expropriation without compensation is like the biggest fight that we have looking at us for 2020, basically, because once property rights go, the entire economy goes, mm. the entire law goes, the rule of law goes, because property rights are the only guard against state power that individuals have, basically. Having mm. what belongs to you and having law recognize that it belongs to you. And our government wants to upend it and we must fight it with all that we have because mm. all politicians have proven that they are quite incompetent at handling anyone's property, let alone everyone's. Dumo, the idea that politicians can have a say uh, unilaterally around who gets to own something, who doesn't. Is that a good thing? No, it's a terrible thing. I mean, just imagine Kate is deciding <laughs> if you should actually get property or not. I mean, the, the reality is this. They're not going to work in the best interest of, um, of people, even though they say they're going to do so. Mm. At the end of the day, if they expropriate property, it's going to go to their friends or whoever. We saw the same thing in Zimbabwe. We, we can farm this. Is exactly. that right to call them? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> got a wine farm somewhere out in there. It's like, what? Dude. Yeah, it's exactly my point. So no one's going to benefit from this. This, this is going to just give total power to the state yeah. and there's no accountability and therefore if you have, a, if you have power without accountability, you're just going to have more chaos in my opinion. Mm -hmm. we, we've spoken about this on the show before. The idea that um, at the heart of things like expropriation without compensation, prescribed assets, the NHI, um, at the heart of it all is, is the, the desire by mostly leftist politicians to control all aspects of people's lives. Dumo, I'm going to look to you first on this question as I fight off a fly. Um, why is this a problem? Why, from someone... From, from those of us who are liberty-loving individuals, and I think Uzakele set up one side of it, yeah. the idea that property rights help you differentiate and have freedom from the state. Mm -hmm. But why is it such a problem to let politicians decide everything? Surely that's a good thing, isn't it? Nah, not at all. You see, the moment you allow uh, politicians to take over your lives, what's going to happen is that, number one, you're going to have less freedom, and number two, you're going to see other things that you take for granted are just going to fall away very quickly. Because it, because it has this, because this idea that, um, that the state knows what's good for you. But really, they don't. I mean, this, and also, you've seen many attempts when they try to control people's lives. The economy and people's decision-making processes are so complex 
that the state cannot take that all into account. Absolutely. So I, I just think, number one, they're incapable of even taking that into account. And number two, when they have that much power, they become corrupt. Absolutely. Dumo makes an, an, an absolutely spot on point. The idea that we avoid centralizing decision making, we avoid centralizing power because of this thing called bounded rationality. The idea that an individual agent or a small group of the people can never know everything at once. Um, that societies by their very nature are very spontaneous and you know transactions happen all over the place. This is why we want to decentralize power and essentially allow individuals and really we, we talk a lot about individuals on the show, but really we're a family society. And insofar as we talk about the individual, we mean families, people like you and me, making decisions about our own lives. Guys, as I wrap up this particular conversation, because it's something we'll be watching, I think, and I think on your show, you just wrapped up a conversation um, with a guest. I won't mention his name because I'll, that's for the, your prerogative, but you, this is a big topical theme you discussed on your show too, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? yes definitely. It's a, it's a big topic because... Um, people on that show were saying that the people that are going to lose the most as a result of more centralization of power are black people. Yeah. Black people are going to lose out the most. And that's why I wanted to go with, with this particular next question. There, there is a soft bigotry that we often hear from politicians and the chattering classes that, ah, man, these poor blacks, they don't need to make decisions about their own lives. Let the politicians decide on their behalf. And by the way, you'll hear this from even middle class individuals who say, well, I'll pay my taxes. Now the government must go sort out the poor. Um, you know, it's these sort of soft bigotry points that we hear a lot. But Zakir, I'm going to ask you, um, is it true that somehow just my being poor, being a poor individual, I'm unable to make decisions about my life. I need some politician of whatever iteration. He could be a colonial politician, and a, an apartheid politician, or even today's regime's politician to make decisions on my behalf. I mean, it, it is entirely antithetical to what has at least defined human progress in the age of industrialism, right? Poverty, I believe, to build the strongest of character. I come from at least not a very well-privileged background, and I basically that motivated me to become the person that I am, and I aspire to be each and every day. So I don't really necessarily understand, right? To the, the poor person, if they are really concerned about their getting out of poverty, is the best person to make the decision themselves. You raise a very salient point, really, about why politicians can never be involved in any capacity in making people's decisions because people will, will all have will all hold subjective value considerations right our values or what is good or what is preferential to us differs according to individual and individual therefore the efficiency of those decisions need to be made on an individual basis which is why liberty is an imperative mm. really the only way to conduct society the most efficient at least and efficient in a way that will be best understood by everyone is to let those people let make their own decisions mm. really and i think poor people should be given the most leeway and not only that in south africa we have seen that poor people when allowed when the government doesn't get into their way when the government doesn't put strenuous regulations on them selling selling whatever they deem necessary on the roads or whatever really they are, they are very entrepreneurial. Not only that, in townships they are very entrepreneurial, <coughs> even though they don't comply with regulations that are set out by the state. So basically, poor people have the agency. They just need the government to get out of mm. their way and they'll prove Demo? themselves. Poor people have agency. Uh, I'm going to be shooting a an episode very soon, a, a two part uh, series called Water Socialism, and this topic also comes out. I mean, uh, just to make the, the the random example, there's a place in it. Uh, in case that N slash free state, actually free state, called Harry Smith. Mm -hmm. And Harry Smith, for, for the longest of time, it has a corrupt municipality. And the municipality was just not providing water. The infrastructure was laid um, broken and disrepair, not, not maintained. And a group of individuals, a white farmer and some black individuals from the local township, got together and said, hey, why wait for the politicians? Why wait for the municipality? How about we take the initiative, even if we're breaking the law, and essentially fix the infrastructure? Mm -hmm. Could it be said, therefore, that poor people really don't have agency when we see these sort of examples? No, it's not true. Uh, poor people do have agency. Um, you know, um, someone close to me was telling me how back in the day, they actually built a school for themselves with mm -hmm. no government funding. So, you know, people, if they come together and they decide on, to, or decide on what to do, they will do it. That's what I think, and I think we should allow people to have freedom. And if we don't do that, we're not going to see progress, mm. and especially the poor. The poor are, in my opinion, the most industrious and the most motivated people. Mm. In my opinion. 
So guys, we're going to be watching that, um, or we're going to be watching developments around expropriation without compensation, the NHI and prescribed assets, and we're going to call out those individuals who continue to make the argument that somehow these policies are pro-black or they're pro-poor, because there's a very sort of insidious sleight of hand that happens in this country when you're trying to sell people bad policy, you make it about race, and that somehow this policy failed all over the else, everywhere else in the world will somehow be great for us here. So we're going to be watching that on our various shows, and I think it was like Hill is writing also, so uh, look out for that. Um, guys, let's move on. Um, there's been some other interesting things that happened this week. Um, I'm going to leave this for another show. Because um, you guys know I'm like a super Zionist, um, and the deal of the century, as Trump put it, has come out. So I'll be I'll be bringing you analysis on that, my view, my take in a series of vlogs, and even on the Chai FM show every Tuesday at 9 a.m. It's uh, Big Daddy Liberty and Sarah Gone. We're going to be having that conversation on the show this week, um, guys. Other big news items this week. The more we mentioned something before we went on that we wanted to cover. I'm putting you on the spot slightly. Now. I think it was Brexit. Yes, that's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, a, a, another case, you will, if, if you will, of a, a peoples who exercised their own agency and said enough with a foreign power controlling um, the UK. They demanded their sovereignty back. Your thoughts on Brexit? Ah, Brexit. Oh, you know, you, um, UK <laughs> politics is not my strong point. But one thing I will say is that, um, you know, just watching it from just from the outside, watching stuff on YouTube, looking at the media and everything like that. I think for me, the, what it has shown is that um, there has been something that has been going on in the UK that people are not happy with. Yeah. And um, they've taken initiative and said, listen, we need to stop this. So you saw Nigel Farage and all other politicians and the Brexit party pushing for this. And uh, it just shows, you know, um, at some point, uh, a nation will want to take a certain direction. Mm. And they're gonna do what they can to do it. And it's look, it's been a long time coming. They voted in 2016 against yes. this, and you saw the other the the leftist politicians were trying to stop it. And the elites, and the elites, sort of it's laughing down at these. Ha! Huh, look at these pesky poor people voting for the UK. Don't they know they're disturbing our holidays in Spain? Um, you know, but it was it was sweet satisfaction, I suppose, in that regard. Mm -hmm. That actually. Um, you saw power being decentralized yeah. once again yeah. into, um, again, not that I'm a, a, a big advocate of the nation state per se, yeah. but insofar as when you start seeing power being usurped away from you as the citizen and decision making being done by, you know, these unelected officials in the EU, of course people are going to have an issue with that. Uh, uh, Zex? True, true. Like, Brexit is very interesting, right? Because I think for, for liberals all across the world, I don't think the motivations of at least the majority of the Brexit campaign was very libertarian in that regard, maybe outside of them seeking sovereignty, right? But that is sovereignty within the context of a nation state, as you said. So that calls into question too, not only that, like it, 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 I think it was based on a primary distaste for immigration and that is a very close issue at least a contestable issue even amongst liberals between like open borders or controlled immigration so it's it's it's, it's a very interesting political argument and development to say the least but on a broader sense i'm very glad that power is taking away from the eu the eu has proven very reckless really in 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 exercising the power that the European nations have given to it, if you look at the actions of the European Central Bank in their actions and basically increasing the money supply since the crash mm. of 2008. Yeah. So even though the motivations of the UK people I don't think were that in them seeking to basically determine their own fate in much more concrete ways like that, like having much more sound central bank policy or may having much more, much more liberal uh, immigration policy because I don't I think it will actually go the other way and they will have much more stricter control so but, but let's talk about that very quickly because I think you're raising an important point um, let's just zoom in for just a minute on immigration generally speaking my view is hey if you want open borders and if you want a free flow of people in and out then get rid of things like welfare in your society so that people who come to your country come generally speaking wanting to be productive to work um, and not essentially uh, living off of the, the state funds of, of other people who are productive and contribute. Mm -hmm. That's generally my view. I'm, I'm very much actually in, in favor of a free flow of people. Um, but for me, that's the central issue. What are you moving to a country to do? To work, to produce, to contribute to the next man, or to essentially live off of welfare and very generous welfare pro programs that you sometimes can get in the UK? Uh, mm -hmm. Excuse me, in the... 
in Europe. And, and, thoughts? And, and, and that, that's a very interesting thought, really, but I don't consider it an argument against immigration per se. It's no. an argument against the welfare state. And you see, it seems like people who argue against the free flow of people really seem to argue for it from a consequentialist perspective, right? For, uh, they don't argue on the principle of allowing people to move freely wherever they mm. deem it, wherever they deem, wherever they deem to move, really, because I don't think they have any argument, especially if they're liberals, really, to argue against immigration. So it's always a consequentialist argument as if, what, what if there's the welfare state? I mean, if the welfare state is the problem, Problem, then let's get rid of the welfare state. I would agree with that. Precisely. So, 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 so I, I believe that to be the solution. Really, I believe immigration to be a, a, an issue that the state should not be involved in. And I, at least, I fall on the side that leans more towards allowing more freedom for people. It's the same principle I believe that uh, we have figured out at least economically with allowing the free movement of, of goods and services right across borders. To free trade tends to yield more prosperity. Therefore, labor is an element of production. Or I would we not want it to move. Free Really across borders, if we do recognize that trade brings about prosperity in the goods and services, really. So, from an economic perspective, I just believe that liberty is on a principled basis is an imperative and it should be allowed for anyone and everyone. And when you look at African history specifically, mm -hmm. the issue of immigration is very interesting because it is not understood, at least the way some Western civilizations understand it, in having strict borders and something like that. Mm. So, yeah. All right, a bit of disagreement between Zakele and I. Uh, I make the argument that, you know, absolutely, you want to have a free flow of, of people, but essentially you can't do that if uh, the motivators for some moving to a certain part of the world is the ability to live off of others through welfare. As Akele says, no, even if there is welfare, to a large extent, the principle of people being able to freely move is more important. Your thoughts? I think, um, yeah, both, both sides have merits. Um, one thing that I've realized is that the left loves to use the welfare state and immigration as a means to um, get to consolidate their power. So what will happen is that they'll, 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 they'll exploit the libertarian policy mm -hmm. of um, freedom of movement and then set up a massive welfare state, get a lot of people that depend on the welfare state, those people vote for the left, and then they can institute their socialist policy. So creating a perverse incentive, yes. essentially? Exactly. To effect, okay, all right. That's so, so, that's, so that is one thing that I've noticed, and that is actually one of the biggest points of immigration in Europe and in the United States mm. and so forth. I'm a big fan of freedom of movement, but at the same time, we must be careful that the left doesn't um, you know, exploit that policy to their, to, to their advantage. So I, I, I agree. Remove the welfare state, and um, that, that's the first thing. The welfare state has to go. I agree. And then I... But I, I won't. But 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 I won't advocate for keeping a welfare state and closing up the borders because that's just going to increase taxes and it's going to cost even more. Two, three, 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 three. Thanks. Your thoughts? Uh, uh, and with, with regards to Duma's point, really, I think even with the issue of the left uh, taking advantage of these people who come and take advantage of the welfare state again it comes into an issue of us getting rid of the welfare state. Really, if liberals, the liberals must fight for their principles. If the left does a better job of convincing people that their principles are better, then it is an issue with us as a libertarian or liberal movement, basically, that we aren't convincing people that our ideas are worth voting for. So basically, we, it, I, I believe it much more easier to convince people that our principles and policies are the ones that got you here, therefore, for you to stay here and make this place much more productive, it would be, it, it behoove you, basically, to vote for us. But again, I don't think it's an issue to against immigration per se when you say that the left takes advantage of it and makes people vote for them because again that i think speaks to the organizational capacity of liberal movements and liberal political parties and not being able to capture the imaginations of the common folk really even though their ideas i believe to be the most amenable <laughs> <Wasn't feeling nervous. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> just making sure you guys understand that yeah. <laughs> we don't hear each other here we debate it's, you know but i, I think you're making a point, an important point but it, it, we, we can't wish away, though, the idea of incentives and what sort of incentives drive and motivate people to move where they move. So, for instance, no South African is moving into Zimbabwe right now. Why? Because the incentives to move there are pretty much non-existent. In other words, they don't have much in the way of a, of a market economy. Um, they have essentially a closed-off crony society, not like... Not that we don't have one, um, but these sort of things are also an important driver at dis uh, in helping someone make a decision as to where they move. So, again, I don't think anybody here is necessarily against the idea that people should be able to freely move. The issue becomes, um, how do you do that? How do you facilitate that? Um, again, uh, this is an interesting debate. I think it's something worth 
fleshing out in a longer episode, but um, let, let's cap it off there for now. Um, as we sort of run out of time and we genuinely, genuinely are running out of time here. Dumo, in the news cycle going forward, what should we, what should we be watching out for? Um, what's on your mind? Uh, my mind is um, obviously expropriation of land without compensation, the NHI, and uh, retrenchments in the economy. Hey man, bloodbath. Uh, the bloodbath. It's and, getting real. And the stats they say uh, releases. So I'm going to look for that, um, see if, uh, if there's any um, news coming up next week with regards to how the economy did over the December period and so forth. All right. So, Kelly, in the news cycle, or what are you writing about? What do you have in mind? Uh, basically, this year, I'll be committing a, a huge amount of my time to fighting against EWC and basically by my writing. I am a nerd, so I can't necessarily fight you physically, but intellectually, I'll try to do my best. So, yeah, expropriation without compensation is the biggest thing. We have to fight against it, really. Zimbabwe is a salient example, and I believe that this year we'll have to amp up the fight during the public hearings. Anyone, if you can write, really just produce your submissions to parliament yeah. and let them hear your voice because we can't allow them to make us make Make us walk further down the road to self-doubt. Absolutely. Yeah. Fully agree. Guys, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Blacks Only. Very quickly, how do people reach you? How do they find you? Dumo? Okay, you can reach me on Twitter. Um, it's at Dumo Denga. Same thing on Instagram. And yeah, and you can email me at dume at menpatriot.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Zakes, how do we uh, reach you? Yeah, on Twitter at Zakes underscore BC and on Instagram at Zakes double underscore. Hey, ta-da. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, what, some of the things I'll be looking out for in the coming week, hey, who knows? I may pop up at one of these public hearings um, going across the country on the issue of the NHI. And boy, oh boy, um, we should say the politicians will not be happy with what I have to say in that moment. So keep an eye out for that as I plan that. And um, yeah, guys, we, I'll be watching some of this other stuff that's brewing in the news cycle. I see the crusade against uh, a one Miss Ellen Zeller continues in the news cycle. In City Press today, there's some article which um, got my interest. And of course, um, a one Mr. Musi Maimani, who seems to be becoming the, the new age cheeky politician like Malema and you know, he's sort of casting himself in that same vein, talking about a Judas Stenhazen, whatever man. Hey man, come on now Maimani, lay off, lay off the cough syrup dog, I see what you're doing, trying to be all like radical and woke and stuff, cut it out dog, cut it out. Anyway, I'll be watching that and more this week and um, stay in touch, keep uh, you know, sending me those comments and those messages, I do appreciate it. Remember, like and share um, the show, put it out as widely as possible in your social media network so that we can grow the show and that we can remind and even teach more people that they should never trust a commie 